Their name should reflect... Ref <laughs> December 2024 will mark the 10 year anniversary of me using the Mendix platform. A lot can change in 10 years. Something that was true and correct when I started might not be so anymore. As it was recently where I posted a blog by another writer where they had used outdated naming conventions. In my review, I missed this. Luckily, an attentive reader let me know and I was able to correct it. And so I decided to head over to the Mendix docs for a quick refresher on what the current standards are for naming conventions and some other development best practices. Let's start with the basics. Naming microflows. Ideally, any microflow which can be triggered by a user should begin with the prefix ACT, which stands for action. After the prefix, you should add which entity this microflow will affect. For example, customer. To end it off, we should add a descriptor for the operation being performed on that entity. For example, update account. Put it all together and it should look something like this. ACT, customer, update account. The general format for all event microflow names should follow this format. Prefix, entity, operation. Every rule has exceptions though. In certain cases, you may have no data being changed in a microflow. In this scenario, it's reasonable to not include an entity name. Or perhaps a microflow can be triggered in multiple ways. In this case, you may consider using additional prefixes to make it easier to identify their uses. Microflows connected to events on an entity should have a prefix which explains how they are triggered. For example, microflows which trigger before or after an entity is committed should have the suffix BCO, before commit, or ACO, after commit. The same applies for events which create, delete, or roll back an entity. We only change the letters describing the event. Here we have a table of prefixes for the different types of events. Any event used on a page should also receive a proper name. Any microflow connected as a data source for any data view, list view, template, or data grid should get the prefix DS. This is followed by the purpose of the microflow, which in a data source is generally what data is being retrieved. This pattern is repeated in other page event flows. It's always event type purpose. Any microflows used in a workflow should also be named accordingly. If the microflow is used for user assignment, the prefix is WFA. Any flow used by the system receives WFS, and when a user creates a task, we use the prefix WFC to identify it as an uncreated event. Luckily, all of these follow the same pattern of event type, prefix, purpose, or entity. Some examples here are scheduled events, which get the prefix SCE, validation flows, which get VAL, and unit tests, which can get tests underscore or UT underscore. Finally, there are app microflows, which trigger when the app is started or shut down. Any sub microflows called inside these app event flows should also receive their own prefixes. Module names are meant to represent complete and replaceable features or services. You might have a module dedicated to a specific integration or a module for user management. Their name should accurately reflect their purpose as simply as possible. The module name should also be in upper camel case meaning the first letter of each word is capitalized without spaces between the words. Entities are slightly different, but we also use upper camel case. We use entities to reflect real life objects you might find in life. Products, people, assets. These things are usually tangible. They can also be records people might keep. For example, employee work time logs. Regardless of what it is, we should always try to use the singular form for the name. Think user and not users, order and not orders. You should also try to avoid using any numbers, special characters, or underscores in the name. This is because it can make it harder for other people to understand and maintain your work over time. Folder structure is also important if you want to keep your projects clean and easy to navigate. While it is important to define early in your project, it should also be adapted to each individual project in a way that suits the development team. Generally speaking, there are two main ways to group your work into folders. The first approach is process-related sources. Every project will have processes which can logically be grouped together. You may put all the pages and microflows for a signup flow together, perhaps broken up by the number of steps for that process. The second approach is entity-related sources. Every project will also have pages and microflows grouped around entities. Think of overviews and new edit pages. These types of assets can be grouped together in a folder named after that entity. I have to say that I was surprised by the things which have changed. 
or perhaps I learned them incorrectly all along. While I'm now conditioned to use ACT instead of IVK, I realized that I used the incorrect prefixes for scheduled events. Normally, I would use the prefix SE and not SCE, as is correct. It's a good idea to check back to the basics from time to time, as you may genuinely learn something you didn't know and make the experience of working with you just a little bit nicer for others. That's all for now. Until next time, I'm Ryan Mocky, and this is Hello Mendix.